the episode we have all been waiting for, a love letter to philodendron, one of the oldest tried and true genera for houseplant lovers. And it makes sense that they're so popular and that they've continued to be so popular over the decades because this is a genus that has something for everyone. The genus philodendron has over 400 known varieties that you can care for successfully in your home. Some varieties climb, some varieties tumble down the side of a bookshelf and trail. Some grow on the ground. Some are green, some are variegated, some are pink, some are orange, some are red. They have a philodendron for everyone. And more importantly, these are plants that you can grow successfully in your home relatively easily. What's not to love? Welcome to the Growing Joy with Plants podcast, where we not only learn how to care for plants successfully, but how to simply and affordably use our plant babies to cultivate more joy in our lives by doing so. I'm Maria, former plant killer turned happy plant lady, author of Growing Joy, The Plant Lover's Guide to Cultivating Happiness, speaker, podcaster, and most importantly, your new best plant friend. On Growing Joy with Plants, you'll find conversations about houseplant care, gardening tutorials, and wellness through the lens of plants. Plant care. Welcome back to Growing Joy with Plants, plant friends. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Maria. I am your new best plant friend, and I'm here to help you care for plants successfully and grow joy in your life by doing so. And if you're a repeat listener, welcome back. Welcome home. I'm so excited to continue this mini series with Proven Winners Leaf Joy. We're calling it Growing Joy with Leaf Joy. It's a monthly mini series where we do these deep dives on either genus, like one genus. So we've done episodes on alocasia, ficus, calathea, this week's philodendron, we've got one on ferns coming up. Or we cover general houseplant care topics, like soon we'll have a episode on everything you need to know about watering houseplants. So make sure you're subscribed to the podcast because these Growing Joy with Leaf Joy episodes, part of this mini series, they air once a month. And if you're a visual learner, we also have video companions on YouTube. So in this episode, I'm going to dive into a high-level overview of philodendron and where they grow outdoors. Then we're going to get into an in-depth care guide, how to care for them. We're going to talk about troubleshooting. I'm going to go through very different species and how to care for, you know, the specifics, the nitty-gritty of the different types of philodendron. But we have a video on my YouTube channel, Growing Joy with Maria, that will actually show you all of the different plants that we talk about. So it's fun to listen to this episode. And then maybe when you get home, if you're listening while you're driving, go check out the video and see what we're talking about. So that'll be linked in the show notes. And it's also made in partnership with Proven Winners Leaf Joy. So today we are celebrating the mighty philodendron, a staple in my plant collection over the seven or eight years that I've been caring for plants. Philodendron are probably a staple in your plant collection as well. If you care for houseplants, you likely have a Hartley philodendron, right? Or one of the basic philodendrons that we all see. But like I said earlier, there's over 400 different species of philodendron that you can care for. And this episode is going to be dedicated to how to care for them, but also maybe offering you some varieties that you might not have heard of before, might not have tried before, and you might want to experiment with. Because on the whole, philodendron tend to be very hardy species that thrive indoors and will give you the epic indoor jungle vibes of your dreams. So this episode is just me. Let's get into kind of a high level overview of what philodendron are in nature, how they exist in nature. And then we'll go into how we can replicate that by care tips, everything you need to know to care for philodendron successfully. And then stay tuned because we're going to dive into all of the different types of philodendron I've had in my collection over the years and multiple different types that have hit the market recently with leaf joy that you might want to try that I've been growing and experimenting with. And that has been so fun. So philodendron as a genus, let's talk about it. It is one genus. It has many different varieties. So the genus is the overview. Like you can think of a genus as the last name. So my last name is Fiella. So my genus is Fiella. And then the species are the different family members kind of under that genus. So the species would be me and my siblings or my parents, right? So in case, you know, the word genus confuses you or the word species confuses you. So the genus philodendron has over 400 different varieties or species in this genus of philodendron. And the 400 varieties are not all the same. There are some genus or genera, that's the plural of genus, 
where they look pretty much the same, right? Like in our Calathea episode, Calathea, for the most part, yeah, they have different colors, but like they're a very similar structure. Philodendron can look really different. Some are fuzzy, some are colorful, some are plants that kind of grow upright, some are vining plants, right? Like it's kind of incredible when you think about the genus of philodendron, how different so many of the plants look in this one genus. You've also seen different plants that used to be called philodendrons that have now been categorized out of the philodendron genus because they have been so different that actually they've just changed. But anyway, that's getting a little bit too in the weeds. But basically, I'm telling you this to say in this genus, you know, they are found all over the world in the tropical rainforests of the Caribbean, Colombia, Venezuela, the West Indies. They're generally found in the understory of tropical rainforests. So keep that in mind as we go into our care guides. And like I said, they have variegation. You're going to see some philodendron with really smooth, waxy leaves. You're going to see some philodendron with fuzzy leaves. I can't wait to tell you about one of my new favorite philodendrons, which is a fuzzy-leaved and fuzzy-stemmed philodendron. Some have thinner leaves, some have thicker leaves, some can tolerate more drought than others. I like to say that philodendron are besties with trees because many philodendron live in partnership, in plant friendship with trees. So they climb at the bottom of the rainforest, um, at the understory of the rainforest, but then they will actually, they've adapted these aerial roots that grow up their stems and the aerial roots can attach to the tree and then climb up the tree to look for light. I just think that's so cool and smart and a reason to why plants have been around so much longer than humans because they're so freaking adaptable and cute and cool, but they live in harmony with trees. They use them for support and those aerial roots that you see growing out of your philodendron can actually adapt to actually cling on to the tree. So if you put a philodendron in your home in a very happy environment, those aerial roots can actually attach to your wall and climb your wall, or you can put them on a moss pole and they'll attach. A cool story, when I lived in New York City, I had a 500 square foot apartment and I had a really epic green wall. In that green wall, we put philodendron Brazil and philodendron lemon lime. The philodendron Brazil is a climbing variety of philodendron. And after about a year, I was pinning the vines to my wall to make it look like it was climbing. I used those, you know, sticky strips that you could put on the wall and then kind of drape a vine over. But after a year, because the plant was so happy, it was getting great light. It was really happy. The aerial roots actually started attaching to the wall and the plant started climbing my wall on its own. And I thought it was the coolest thing. A little bit of paint came off when we took it off of the wall. So renters beware. We were renters, but it wasn't anything that like didn't get our, we didn't get our security deposit back or anything. But anyway, aerial roots are really cool. And when you give your plant enough humidity, you will tend to be able to instigate those aerial roots to actually attach to things. Okay. I digress. We'll talk about that more in the care, in the care guide, but a lot of people get kind of confused about aerial roots, what they are, if you have to cut them off. The answer is no, they're so cool. They're an adaptation to the plant to help them exist and thrive in the jungle. And you can use them to your own ability. If you don't like the way you look, you can cut them off, but you can train your plant to have those aerial roots attached to a moss pole and you can spritz them. So I always say don't spritz leaves because you can cause fungal infections. But if you really want to spritz something every day or throughout your workday, spritz your aerial roots. They'll love it. So because they grow in different ways, because these varieties grow differently, you'll see a pot of a Hartley philodendron or a philodendron Brazil that cascades or down or a philodendron brantianum. You'll see these full pots of a trailing philodendron, right? So those trailing philodendrons that look so iconic in a bookshelf, like cascading down a bookshelf, can also be trellised and actually grow upright. But you will see a lot of philodendrons that come with moss poles or that you can train to attach to a moss pole. And I love moss poles. I think they look really wild and cool. I have multiple in my home. I actually have a YouTube video on how to make your own if you're interested in doing that. So that's just some high level information about philodendron, how much variety they have, how cool they are. And they have so many species because they have just adapted over time, which I think is so interesting. So let's talk about light with philodendron. So what I have found with the philodendron in my care is that they are pretty low light tolerant. They grow in the understory of the jungle. So they're used to medium or bright indirect light. But 
what I have found with philodendron, if you give them more light, their leaves will grow larger. So a big rule of thumb with houseplants is even the lowest light in the understory of the jungle is probably still more light volume than what we're able to give our plants in our home unless they're under a grow light. So philodendron are very low light tolerant. If you have a low light home, if you want to put them on a bookshelf that isn't in bright direct light, that's totally fine. And that's great, right? Because in our houseplant collection, we need a variety of bright and low light plants because we can't just crowd all of our plants in one window. That's not going to look aesthetically pleasing. But if you have a philodendron that you want to grow really epic leaves, giving it a little bit more light, like leaning towards a little bit more light than a little less light is going to set that philodendron up for success. I have one philodendron, a Hartley philodendron that I've had for seven years at this point. And it's interesting, depending on what light it's in, the leaves kind of are different sizes and you can kind of tell. The other thing with light that you can tell on philodendron is how long their internodes get. So with a philodendron, you have a leaf, the stem and another leaf, right? With these vining plants. The nodes are where the leaves pop out. I like to say it's like the knuckle of a plant and that's where the leaf is gonna grow out of on the stem. The space in between the leaves on the stem is called the internode in between the two nodes. And you'll notice that if you want a super bushy philodendron and you want those internodes to be shorter so you get more leaves growing with less space in between, you're likely going to need to give your plant more light. So I have a philodendron that I've grown in multiple different homes. I was giving it bright indirect light. The internodes were like an inch and a half long, right? So it would grow an inch and a half of a stem before it grew another leaf. Then I put it under a grow light. All of a sudden, the internodes were half of an inch long because it was able to just grow more and more leaves, right? So lighting is, you can toy with lighting with philodendron. Philodendron are going to tolerate low light, but they might have longer internodes. They might have smaller leaves. If you have the ability to play with light and to give your philodendron light, I highly suggest it because they will reward you with bushier growth, larger leaves, happier plants. Sometimes that's also a way to get more fenestrations in a, in a fenestrated philodendron. So kind of overview with philodendron is they are low light tolerant, but I highly suggest you give them at least medium light, bright indirect light, and many philodendron can tolerate periods of direct sun as well. Just be careful, you know, if you're putting them in direct sun, just be mindful if, if they start to burn, if you start to see browning and crisping. But in my experience, I have not struggled with that with the philodendron that I've kept. If you have a fuzzy philodendron, sometimes that fuzz is an adaptation to protect itself for the sun. So, you know, don't put a philodendron fuzzy or a philodendron gloriosum in bright direct light. But besides that, most of my philodendron are very happy with the more light I give it, the more it grows. Another note is if you get a philodendron that's variegated or if you get a philodendron that is a different color, like a Prince of Orange or the red uh, Congo or the red one, those likely need more light because they have less green chlorophyll, which is where they do photosynthesis. So I have a philodendron white wizard, which has beautiful variegation in it, and it's growing slower than my normal green philodendron just because there's less green on those leaves and the green is where photosynthesis happens and that's where the plant creates its food. So just know that if you have a variegated philodendron, it might be a slower grower and you might have to kind of boost the light. Same with those colorful plants like my Prince of Orange, I've been playing around with, you know, how much light I've gi- I'm giving it to help support it. If you really want those vibrant colors, you need to definitely give it more light. So I think that's all for light. When it comes to watering, I also find philodendron to be extremely forgiving about watering. I have left my philodendron for weeks on end without watering them, whether I've been traveling or whether I've just forgotten about them. And they hang in there. Give them a good water when you forget to water them, obviously, but they're drought tolerant. So I would let, you know, the first inch of soil, like if you stuck your fir- your finger in the soil to the first knuckle, you could let that soil dry out. Don't be irresponsible like me prior and let the entire pot dry out. But you can let that top layer of soil dry out before you water again. You'll also notice if it's thirsty, you know, it's going to start to look wilted. It's going to start to look a little unhappy. And that's your cue to water. But they are pretty forgiving. If you are a low maintenance plant parent, so I have a plant parent personality test on my website. It gives you your plant parent personality and different plants that work for your personality. If you're a low maintenance plant parent, which is someone who really can't be putting in a lot of work with their house plants, but they want to have plants, philodendron are a great option because many philodendron can go, this is all dependent on your home, but in my personal home, I can go a couple of weeks before watering them again. 
but everybody's home is different. So don't take that and go not water your philodendron for two weeks. Look at the soil. When the top of the soil dries out, that's when you're going to give it a water again. And of course, with all houseplants, water thoroughly, but not necessarily frequently. So when you do go to give your philodendron water, make sure that you water it deeply so that water runs out of the bottom of the pot. This makes sure that all of the soil is hydrated and the roots grow down to the bottom because as philodendrons get larger, you want them to have roots that have kind of grown down into the pot to anchor them so they don't tip over because philodendrons can get really big. In terms of soil, because they are epiphytes and they grow on trees, you're going to want to give them a nice chunky, aeroidy type mix. I have put them in my, you know, Espoma general potting mix. But if you want to get fancy, you can add a little bit of orchid bark to your potting mix just to make sure those roots have air. Roots need air as much as they need water and philodendron roots particularly because so many of them are vining and they do, you know, their roots are used to getting exposed to air. So you want to have nice airflow and drainage in that potting mix. Stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed. We're going to have a whole episode on watering in next month on this mini series. So in terms of humidity and philodendron, you know, we've talked about a bunch of plants where it's kind of a deal breaker if you don't have high humidity in your home, like calathea or like alocasia, right? Like they need humidity in order to not be sad. In my experience, I've never put my philodendron near a humidifier. They have been in 25% humidity. They've been in 35% humidity and they've been totally fine. However, if you want to encourage those aerial roots to attach to a moss pole, if you want them to climb on a wall, humidity is going to be a big part of how that happens. Because if you think about it, they're in the tropical rainforest, it's 80, 90% humidity. So if you give them that humidity, they will reward you with air, happier aerial roots. Um, and sometimes too, with fenestrated philodendron or philodendron that have thinner leaves, that humidity is going to give them the extra booth to be more fenestrated, to be happier, to be perkier, right? So if you can give them humidity, give them humidity. But if you're someone who doesn't have time to be filling humidifiers every day, I totally hear you. I'm totally with you. Philodendron are a great option for you. In terms of fertilizer, I say fertilize when you see new growth. My philodendron are always growing because I have them under grow lights, so I'm fertilizing them a lot. But fertilize, you know, general rule of thumb is to fertilize in the spring and summer if you don't put your philodendron under grow lights. But if you see new growth, you can give the plant a little bit of fertilizer to help support it. Let's talk troubleshooting. A lot of troubleshooting is going to be light related. So if your philodendron gets leggy, meaning those internodes get really long and it takes a really long time for your philodendron to grow another leaf and it's just like throwing off these long stems, likely that is a light issue. Add a little bit more light and I bet you see those internodes shorten. If you see yellowing leaves, it could be overwatering. It could be underwatering. Make sure that you have your philodendrons in pots with drainage holes. They don't like wet feet. As philodendron grow, you're going to get one or two yellow leaves. So if you have a huge pot of a heart leaf philodendron and there's just like two random yellow leaves, I would just take them off. I wouldn't be worried. But if, you know, all of a sudden you see 20 yellow leaves, that's probably an overwatering issue. Brown leaves tends to be an underwatering issue and or humidity. So if you have your philodendron like next to a baseboard heater, right, or next to your air conditioner where it's getting really dry gusts, you might see a humidity issue. Humidity issue tends to be uniform. So all of the edges of the leaves are going to get brown, right? And then you get a philodendron, you want to put it to a moss pole and it just won't attach. That's going to be a humidity issue because those aerial roots aren't comfortable growing. So you can try and spritz the aerial roots. You can water the moss pole so that the moss pole is kind of giving off more humidity or, you know, alter the humidity in your home. I also like attaching the plant to a moss pole like with string or there are little pins that you can actually pin the vine into the moss pole so that it's like really cozy up in the moss pole and that will also help encourage the aerial roots to grow. Now I want to get into all of the different types of philodendron. I've grown some of the newer types of philodendron that I'm growing with Proven Winners Leaf Joy. So I want to take a minute to thank Proven Winners Leaf Joy for sponsoring this episode. If you don't already know, Proven Winners Leaf Joy is the one of the most amazing houseplant brands on the market. They are growing their houseplants in this incredibly high-tech European greenhouse. They are growing some of the healthiest, happiest houseplants on the market. They have this incredible high-tech European greenhouse that I visited last year. It's unbelievable the lengths that they're going to ensure that they have beautiful, happy, healthy, really lush plants. 
So when you see Leaf Joy in the garden center, you look for the Leaf Joy plant tag that will be hanging on a stick in the pot. But these plants are really robust. You're getting like really bushy, happy plants. And they're growing such interesting varieties. We're going to go over all of the different varieties that they sent me that I've been growing and experimenting with. But if you're someone who is looking for new options for your houseplant collection, Proven Winners Leaf Joy is great to check out because they're really at the cutting edge, the forefront of the plants that are newer to market. And also, if you're a beginner plant parent, Proven Winners Leaf Joy is great to try because the plants are grown with a lot of integrity. Because the plants are grown with a lot of integrity and bringing home a really happy, robust plant is going to set you up for success to care for the plant successfully, right? Instead of bringing home like a sad one. So go to your local garden center, ask for Proven Winners Leaf Joy or look for the Proven Winners Leaf Joy tags and let me know which ones you get and tag me on Instagram with your new plant finds. Okay, so let's go into all of the different philodendron that I've had in my collection. So first off, I want to give a shout out to the Hartley philodendron, tried and true. It's the trailing variety. You see the Hartley philodendron, otherwise known as the philodendron heteresium. You see it as trailing baskets. It's the dark green, glossy, heart-shaped leaves, aka Hartley philodendron. You're going to see them, you know, in every garden center. They're going to be really accessible, really affordable. They're a great plant. I have beat this plant up, man. I have forgotten to water this plant for a month and it still grows. It looks so beautiful in my bookshelf. I prefer to have these plants tumbling down a bookshelf. I think from a plant styling perspective, philodendron are great because bookshelves tend to be lower light scenarios. They're a little bit lower light tolerant. They're so easy to propagate. So if it gets bald or, you know, if you want to just bush the plant up a little bit, you can just trim the bottom and plop it back in your soil, water the soil, and it'll root pretty easily. But I just wanted to give a shout out to that, you know, tried and true plant. In my books from the 70s, you know, I collect vintage gardening and houseplant books from the 60s and 70s. The Hartley Philodendron is in all of those books, and it's in all of the current books now because it's just like a tried and true, great beginner plant, happy plant to live in your life and just like tumble down a bookshelf. I just can't speak enough to how much I love that plant. I also love the Philodendron Brazil. That's what I grew in my green wall a while back. That's the plant that actually was able to successfully attach to my walls. It has really beautiful variegation, yellow, dark green, and lime green. Each leaf, the variegation is a little bit different, which is also really beautiful. And then one of my most favorite philodendrons is the philodendron lemon lime. Leaf Joy has it. It's called the Prismacolor lemon lime, if you see it on the plant tags. I love this philodendron for so many different reasons. Number one, the bright neon green lemon lime color of the philodendron leaves is so shocking. It is so beautiful. It is so happy. It's such a happy color. And this plant grows like crazy. So if you listen to this podcast and you look at my podcast art, I am holding a philodendron lemon lime in my podcast art. That is my mom's philodendron lemon lime that she's had for a while. And because she's given it so much light, it has like exploded in growth. Now, the philodendron lemon lime from Proven Winners Leaf Joy you're going to get is going to be in like a five or a six inch pot. But if you give that thing light and patient and time, it's going to explode into this epic plant that will be like tumbling forward. They grow upright. So I grew it in my green wall and they grew more upright than tumbling. If they get long enough, they'll start to tumble, but you should really grow them upright. My mom has hers trellised now, but they're just a really happy plant. And if you see one in the garden center, you should grab one because also so much of our houseplants are dark green tropical foliage. And I just think this pop of lime green just looks really cool. And it's also a really vigorous grower. So if you give this puppy the light that it needs, it's going to take off for you. Fill your home. You're going to be so happy with it. And also the stems have this really beautiful pink undertone to them. And the pink lime green combo is just chef's kiss. You know what I mean? Okay, next up is a variety that Leaf Joy sent me a while back. I had never grown it before. I am so obsessed with it. It's called the Prismacolor Brantianum, otherwise known as Philodendron Eraceae. It is kind of a riff on the heart-shaped philodendron, but it has dark green leaves with this silvery sheen on top of it. This plant is so beautiful. It comes attached to a moss pole with leaf joy, and it is such a vigorous grower. I turned my closet in my office into a grow room. <laughs> I have a Soltec grow light in my office. I just 
I put a Soltech grow light in the middle of my closet and a table and I just have like so many house plants in it now, which is so funny. But it has grown so happily in like pretty low light, but it's putting off so much new growth. It's climbed all the way up the moss pole beyond the moss pole. So I'm trying to figure out if I want to put a bigger moss pole, if I want to change the trellis, but it's so beautiful. The silver kind of foliage is just so gorgeous. I love that. So that's the brand Tianum. All right, next up, I think is a very cool looking houseplant called the Philodendron Atabopoense. Ataba Poense. <laughs> Ataba Poense. Say that five times fast. This is those philodendron that immediately gives like classic philodendron jungle vibes. It has long leaves, arrowhead shaped, dark green, glossy, long leaves. It's so beautiful. We're talking the leaves are like 12 inches long, right? Eight to 12 inches long. A nice, sturdy, dark green stem. It's a dark green plant. There's no like crazy variegation, but the shine on the leaves is so beautiful. And it's just like that classic jungle look that in the midst of a plant collection looks so dang beautiful. I can't even stand it. I think one of my favorite varieties of the leaf joy plants that they sent me to try out is the philodendron silver sword, otherwise known as the philodendron hastatum. Silver sword philodendron, I brought it home from Florida. So we did our most recent video shoot in Florida. So they shipped a bunch of plants to Florida. I brought it home in my suitcase. (laughs) It's also a plant that comes with a moss pole, but it has these long like minty, greeny, silvery leaves. It has thicker stems, nice long leaves, not as long as the Ataba Poense. They're more like maybe six inch leaves, but it's called Silver Sword because it has this sheen on top of the leaf that's kind of silvery, but it's like a minty green silvery. It's so cool. It's a vining plant, so you want to put it on a moss pole but it's like a chunky vining plant. So if the Hartley philodendron is a more dainty, delicate vining plant, this is like more of a chunky vining plant. And it really just looks really beautiful. I had never seen it before. And I'm really excited to keep growing it and see what it looks like as it gets older and more expressed. I think my most favorite wackadoo plant that I have been recently growing is the philodendron fozzy, otherwise known as the philodendron nagaritense. If you have ever seen the philodendron gloriosum, then you might enjoy the philodendron prismacolor fuzzy. So there's this whole subsect of philodendron that have fuzzy leaves, like that have velvety leaves. They're going to be a little bit more lower light. You're not going to want to put these plants in direct light, but they have this beautiful fuzzy velvety texture on top of their leaves. They tend to be vigorous growers. This plant has huge heart-shaped medium green I actually think it's a darker green, but the the velvety fuzzy texture makes it look lighter green. It has this gorgeous sheen and the stems are red and fuzzy. The stems are kind of fuzzy, kind of prickly actually, but the stems have that like classic kind of hairy, fuzzy philodendron look with these huge, gorgeous, heart-shaped glossy, like silvery leaves. And it's been so fun to grow. It really looks completely different than the rest of my collection. I don't have a philodendron gloriosum, but it kind of has that gloriosum kind of velvety upright, not vining philodendron aesthetic. And it's so beautiful. And I'm really excited to see how big the leaves get because I have it under my grow light. So I bet it's going to just like continue to be so happy. Next up is my Prismacolor White Wizard. I've had this plant for a while now. Is it six months? I got it when I went to visit Leaf Joy's greenhouse. So their greenhouse is in Virginia. I flew to Virginia to tour their greenhouse before I decided to work with them because I wanted to make sure, you know, I vet the people that I work with. And I fell in love with the philodendron white wizard and I brought it home on the plane with me. I looked like such a crazy person. It was it was popping out of my purse and I put it in a little pocket in your airplane seat. But I love it. What I will say about the philodendron white wizard, it's a slower grower. I've had it for five months, and it's maybe grown me like three new leaves. The leaves are absolutely beautiful. Philodendron White Wizard is a upright philodendron that has the most glorious white variegation on it. It's a really structured variegation. Every single leaf has the variegation. The variegation has white and mint green on it. It's so beautiful. It looks very similar to the Thai Constellation variegation. 
but there's big patches of white, right? So this plant is just going to naturally be a slower grower. So I will say it is a slower grower, but it's very happy in the bookshelf behind me. If you watch the videograms from the podcast on my social media, you'll see that I have a bookshelf filled with plants that I put grow lights under. It's very happy under the grow light. It's growing. It also has a little puff and the puff has really taken off growing, but I absolutely love it. The variegation is absolutely stunning. And if you don't want to spend a lot of money on a variegated monstera, the philodendron white wizard might be a great option for you because the variegation is completely mesmerizing. And I don't care that it's not growing fast because I just like looking at the leaves that it already has. All right, two more varieties I'm going to talk to side by side. There's the Prince of Orange philodendron, and then there's the Sun Red philodendron. You also have seen the Rojo Congo philodendrons, like all of these philodendrons that are the upright philodendrons that have the nice leaves. They kind of grow in this kind of crown shape and the leaves have all these different colors. They can be a dark, a deep magenta all the way to, you know, the lemon lime or the Prince of Orange. The Prince of Orange is an orange plant, man. I had never really seen an orange plant with orange foliage and the Prince of Orange is orange. I freaking love it. I'm holding it right now as I'm talking to you. The new growth comes in almost pink, almost pinky orangey, right? And then as the new growth hardens off and solidifies, it turns more orange. Some of the leaves are more yellow orange. Some of the leaves are more red orange. Some of the leaves are more green, but all of the leaves have this really distinct orange outline. So even I'm looking at the green leaves, the green leaves have this orange outline that looks so cool. It's a very like kind of bushy, robust grower. The stems are so freaking cool. Or the petioles, the things that attach the plant to the stems, they are yellow and orange. The Prince of Orange is like a feast for your eyes in terms of all the different colors. There's red, there's pink, there's green, there's light green, there's dark green, there's orange. It's just like, it's such a fun addition to my plant collection. And I'm kind of thankful that they sent it to me because I don't know if I was at the garden center, if I would have picked this up. But now that I have it in my collection, I really like it because it's just a completely different kind of color in the variety of my green tropical foliage. It's just this really fun pop of color, just like that lemon lime is. Then the penultimate plant I'm going to talk about is the philodendron sun red. So that is similar to the Prince of Orange, but it's red. The sheets are red. The new growth is red. It's kind of a red. It's like kind of a pink red. And then as the leaves get older, they get darker red. Sometimes they also have a little bit of green, but it is a red plant. (laughs) If you want a red plant in your collection, this is a very good option for you. It's really striking and really beautiful. And then last but not least, I can't believe I almost forgot. And I think I forgot to talk about this plant in my video, the philodendron pink princess. How could I forget about my favorite plant, the philodendron pink princess? I have been growing multiple pink princess for many years. I love pink plants. If you know me and you follow me on Instagram, you know I love pink plants more than anything. Pink is a big part of my brand and my, I feel like my personality. The pink princess is this variegated philodendron that actually, instead of having white variegation, has pink variegation. It is so stunning. The vines and the petioles are red and they have some variegation. The basic leaf is dark green. And then it has all of these cool variegations. You could get a half moon variegation where the leaf is half pink, half green. I have one leaf that is one half of one half of the leaf. So like a quarter chunk of the leaf is bright pink. And then three quarters of the plant is green. There's others where there's splotches of pink. There's also others that have the splotch of this mint green variegation, which is really beautiful. I will say the leaves of a philodendron pink princess tend to be a little bit more sensitive when they're first emerging. So I have found sometimes that my pink princess, like right now I'm looking at it, it has one leaf that is struggling to emerge. If that's the case, the leaf will emerge in time. But if you see it struggling, you can spritz those new leaves with a little bit of water to help them kind of wiggle free. The leaves are so glossy and shiny when they emerge. They're this like kind of dark pink. And then as they grow, they get the variegation. It's just a gorgeous plant. I love it so much. And I will say it's more of a vigorous grower, I think, than the white wizard. So it's a very similar structure to the philodendron white wizard. It's just that the white wizard has white variegation and the pink princess has pink variegation. I don't know why, but it's kind of in my experience that my philodendron princess grows new leaves faster than the white wizard. They're sitting next to each other on my bookshelf under the same amount of light. 
But if you're like me and you have a passion for pink plants, I can't recommend the Pink Princess enough. I have two of them. I have this one dream or idea that maybe I'm going to put both of them together in a bigger pot and like get a moss pole going and really let that guy grow out or let her grow out. She's totally a girl. But anyway, I've babbled about philodendron for quite some time now, plant friends. <laughs> I'm like, is there more to tell you? There's obviously, the, what did I just say? Maybe 15 or 20 different varieties. There's 400 varieties of philodendron, right? So obviously I missed a few. Obviously, there are different varieties of the types that we talked about, like the white wizard versus the pink princess, the sun red versus the prince of orange. There's the Florida white ghost, which is this gorgeous plant that has really interesting leaf shape. There's the Florida green philodendron that has a really interesting leaf shape. I have the the ghost variety, the variegated variety. Obviously, the variegated variety grows a lot slower than the green one. But It's a wild world of philodendron out there, plant friends. And my only suggestion for you is to try every single variety you can get your hands on because it is a forgiving plant. It is a fast growing plant. It is a fun plant. It is the plant that will give you the jungle aesthetic that you want indoors. I have had so much success with this genus over time as a low maintenance plant parent and as a high maintenance plant parent. And I just, I love it. I love philodendron. (laughs) I feel like That's all I got to say about that. And I love Proven Winners Leaf Joy. The plants that they have sent me are so healthy, so robust, so wide in variety, right? Like most of the plants that I listed, especially the newer varieties are Leaf Joy. So when you go to your local garden center, ask for Leaf Joy, look for the Leaf Joy plant tag, tag me on social media and let me know what you get. I hope this episode was helpful. If you have questions on philodendron that you still need me to answer, You can DM me on Instagram or you can go to the companion YouTube video and comment on the YouTube video and I'll try and make an answer video for you. I hope these genus deep dives are fun and helpful. They're so much fun for me. I feel like I'm back in my first year of plant parenthood again when I get to kind of nerd out and do a deep dive on these specific genus. So it's been so fun, but stay tuned. Next month, we're coming in with a how to water house plants tutorial. I hope you have so much fun with your philodendron as it's the spring, it's the growing season. So hopefully we're going to see more growth from our plants. And until next week, my sweet plant friends, keep growing joy. Plant friend, thank you for tuning in today. It means so much to me that I get to be part of your planty journey. If you like what you heard, make sure you're subscribed to the show so you never miss an episode. We have so many incredible interviews and solo episodes on incredible houseplant and gardening topics that you will not want to miss this year. And while you're over there in the podcast player subscribing, why don't you click over to the review section of Growing Joy with Plants and leave us a review. Reviews are tremendously helpful for the growth of the podcast, so thanks in advance. If you're looking for more opportunities to grow as a plant parent with Growing Joy content, we've got so many options for you. First, I highly recommend you taking the plant parent personality test. It's free. It's super fun. It takes three minutes to complete. At the end of the test, you're going to get your plant parent personality profile and a curated list of plants, projects, and podcast episodes that are right up your alley, tailored just for you and your lifestyle inspired by your results. The links are in the show notes. If you're looking to uplevel your plant parent game, I have so many free downloads on my website that I think could help you, like the Understanding Natural Light download or nine different ways to green up your office space. If you'd like to support the show monetarily and help me bring the show to as many people as possible for free, you can head to our Patreon link in the show notes to learn more about our offerings. And finally, I invite you to come hang out with me and continue the planty conversation on social media, on Instagram and TikTok. I'm growing joy with Maria. My DMs are always open if you have requests for topics or ideas for the show. Thank you again for listening. It is truly my honor and delight to help you keep blooming and keep growing joy.